as it turns out, we might very well be seeing the beginning of a 2023 property bear market. In fact, despite slowing inflation, it's been reported more than one third of home buyers fear going into loan default. Another tech company has announced redundancy and the Reserve Bank Australia is only months away from continuing to increase interest rates into 2023. That's why with everything going on from declining home values, record consumer debt and rising interest rates, I'd like to throw my own thoughts into the mix. If you feel like this could be the wrong time to buy, it turns out there's a historically proven way to determine whether or not now is the right time. Instead of using anecdotes and emotions, I'm going to show you the data and the tools you need to make the right decision today. In an effort to break down the likelihood of more drops, let's go through what's happening, preventative steps you can take to avoid buying a property at the wrong time, and you can learn how I lost $288,000 in trying to time the market. And speaking of timing, if you've got a sec, drop a quick like and subscribe on our channel. We make videos like this every week. In order to prepare for what's to come, it's first important to understand what type of market we're in and what type of downturn we might see. Despite most people thinking that this is a unique event and we've never seen property market go backwards, this type of downturn in property market is something that we've seen before. In fact, we saw it in 2018-19. And now that the most recent boom is over, we're seeing it again. Let's be honest, no one wants to be the person who bought at the peak of the market. We all wanna be the smart buyer who bought at the perfect time to enter the market. The first thing to be aware is the Australian property market moves in cycles. There's a pattern of expansion, peak, contraction, and troughs. These cycles can be long and they don't need to be the same amount in between each stage, but the principle is the same. First, you have expansion phase where demand outstrips supply and prices keep growing. Eventually, the market reaches a peak where the demand and supply are starting to even out. Then you get to contraction phase where there's more supply than demand. Prices start to decrease. Finally, you reach a trough phase where demand for property is its lowest and prices bottom out. And the cycle then restarts. Clearly the worst time to buy is at the peak. That's when prices are at their highest. And if the market crashes, you could end up in a situation where you owe more than your house is worth. This is called negative equity. It's a situation where your home loan, the money that you owe to the bank, is more than your house. And the best time to buy is in the trough because you're getting the property for the lowest price possible in the current cycle. At the moment, and broadly speaking, the Australian property market has reached its peak in the current cycle. And we're in the downturn phase, also known as the contraction phase. But if you are trying to time the market, then the best strategy is to hold off buying until the market bottoms out. And this is a pretty huge but. Timing the market is extremely difficult, almost impossible. Even the world's most prolific investor, Warren Buffett, says he hasn't the faintest idea on timing the market. Because while property markets move in cycles, no one knows how long each part of that cycle will last. Sometimes they go on for years, sometimes only months. And there are so many factors affecting the property market that it's virtually impossible to predict when they're gonna change. Even the experts get it wrong. And that's how I got it wrong as well. I was relying on the so-called experts and my own gut feel. Back in 2009, I bought my first property and I was on my step to becoming a property mogul. Or so I thought. Things went pretty well for a couple of years, but then the market started to turn. I started to get caught up in the media noise and just thought there was no possible way the market could go any higher. You can see the headlines here from 10 years ago. Property market undergoing seismic shift. House prices extend national retreat. World Bank's crisis warning. I got completely caught up in the headlines. I'd paid $344,000 for this apartment. It had gone up to about $400,000 in value and thought there is no possible way an apartment in Sydney, a one bedroom unit could be worth more than half a million dollars. This is insanity. And based on my emotions and my gut feel and my friendship circle who I said, you're crazy having a big mortgage and a debt and a property like that, I decided to sell the property. And again, my decision was based on emotions and not data and analytics. And I realized that this video is about whether you should buy a property now, not whether you should sell it. But think about the person who bought my property. They were buying at a time when everyone was saying the property market it was going to crash. I sold the property for $416,000. 10 years later, the same property today is worth $705,000. More than double what I had originally paid for it. Put another way, I lost $288,000 of upside in trying to time the market, thinking there was no possible way it could go up further. But before we go uncover the data that could help with that decision, let's talk about what led me down the path of selling. You see, I didn't have a super clear long-term goal. I bought that unit as my first home. As time progressed, my goal was capital growth. At that point in time, I really didn't see a way the property could appreciate more. But the thing to think about with you, whether it's buying a home or an investment property, is what's your reason for buying that property? Are you looking to make as much money as possible by buying at the exact right time? Or are you looking for somewhere where you can happily live and enjoy your life? If you are buying purely just to make as much money as possible, then it could be worth waiting a few months to see what's gonna happen. But as you've seen from my example, there's no guarantee that prices will continue to drop. 
If you're buying a home so you could build a life and have a place to truly call your own without having a landlord knocking on the door for inspections every six months, then it really doesn't matter if you're buying at the perfect time. If you're planning on living on the home for a few years, any fluctuations in the market won't really matter over time. On average, Australian property has increased 6.8% over the last 30 years. Rather than paying off someone else's mortgage, you could be paying off your own. And as I'll show you an example later on in the video, your mortgage should actually be cheaper than renting even with higher interest rate. Location is key. To make it clear, I don't recommend timing the market, but that doesn't mean you should just buy anywhere and hope for the best. The reality is there is no single Australian property market. Each city, each region, each suburb has its own property market. If you're a smart buyer, you can find a property with good prospects for growth even if the market is an overall downturn. And I'm gonna show you how. The first thing to remember is as a first home buyer, you should be planning on staying for the home for at least three to five years. Otherwise, you're gonna end up wasting money on stamp duty and other costs, and you'll be more at risk at losing money if there are any downturns in the short term. And compared to an investor, you'll actually be living in the property. So you really need to buy into an area that you wanna live in. And the reality is you won't be getting paid any rent. So your main focus should be on long-term capital growth. We generally recommend having at least three suburbs in mind where you'd like to live before you start your search. Let's look at an example of someone who's thinking of buying a unit in Alexandria in New South Wales, which is where I made my $288,000 mistake. The first thing you wanna do is take a look at the data in your suburb. There's lots of tools you can use, but in this video, I'm gonna use a tool called DSR Data. I have a pretty neat metric called buy and hold. This metric combines a few factors to identify growth areas that have best potential for long-term growth. Alexandria units are rated 65 for buy and hold strategy. It's in the third percentile of Australian markets, which means that DSR rate the suburb as a better option for buying and holding than 97% of Australian housing markets. It looks like Alexandria could be a good option for a first home buyer, but this is just one metric. We wanna look deep and see whether it's really the right suburb to buy in. Let's compare it to some nearby suburbs. The five closest suburbs to Alexandria are Everly, Darlington, Redfern, Waterloo, and Erskineville. With a score of 45, Everly looks like it's gonna be less likely to give us a long-term growth that we want. Darlington scored just one point below Alexandria, which makes it a good option for... Redfern is rated 68, so it's worth a look. Waterloo also has a good score, and Erskineville, on the other hand, only scored 58, so I'm gonna give that a miss. Better yet, I'll share the sheet at the bottom of this video, and if you weren't really sold on Alexandria, there are suburbs with even better long-term projected growth. These include Greenwich, Newtown, and Marrickville. These suburbs are really highly rated for their long-term growth. I'd use the data as a starting point. Next, I'd look at each suburb in a lot more detail. The things I'd be looking for are population. Population growth is a good sign for future demand. To check out population, microburbs is a really good tool. It gives a succinct overview of the census data, investor data, high level planning applications, which we'll come back to the next point, the suburb makeup, cafes, a whole bunch of interesting data that can help you with just get to familiarize yourself with that particular suburb. The census data also breaks it down further and shows that the demographics and growth. And then this shows that Alexandria as a suburb is increasing in size and potentially will continue to see property growth and demand in that area. Developments, I'd do a quick check to see if there's any new developments in the pipeline that could increase supply and reduce the demand for your property in the future. Every city council and every state and every city is gonna be slightly different and uses their own urban development planning tool. I've pulled up this one for Alexandria. You can actually filter by the LGA. If you're in Sydney, this can be a really useful tool for showing sort of housing activity and supply over the next couple of years. It gives even a bit of a forecast here. It does give you a bit of a sense of what the market's looking like. It can show different signs. And this is saying that potentially over the next few years, there might be an above average supply for Forecast. Annualestate.com.au has new and off the plan properties for sale. These will show ones that aren't built yet and gives you a sense of what the pipeline's looking like. And you can compare it to some of those other suburbs that we looked at as a part of the search. You can also look at individual development applications. This one's a bit more tedious. Whenever a property developer is building, they have to go through a specific process of submitting the plans and the details to the city council to get approval and they have to put it up there for the public to see. You can actually search in the city of Sydney. Every city council is going have their own so brisbane city council have their own logan melbourne etc you can sign up for planning alerts as well which shows some of the data and its developments that are there employment opportunity are there good employment prospects are you reliant on just one industry or are there multiple jobs in the area and transport how easy is it to get around core is a great tool to see what it's like for transportation wise the cafes and areas if you're not familiar with the area you might already be living in alexandria for example alexandria is rated 90 it's a walker's paradise potentially one of the more walkable areas compared to other areas in sydney it also gives you restaurants and different areas for eating and drinking. If I found a good suburb with a growing population, no big developments in the pipeline, good employment opportunities and easy access to transport, that's where I'd start looking for suitable properties. From there, I'd start doing my due diligence to find properties that are within my budget, but that's a topic for another video. The reality is the Australian property market moves in cycles and no one knows the exact right time to buy. It's gonna depend on your situation. If you're trying to time the market and maximize your profitability and try and flip a property, then you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the current property cycle. On the other hand, if you're a first home buyer looking at 
buying your home and you're gonna stay in it for the next three to five years, the exact timing isn't gonna make a difference over the longer term. I think from my mistake, you wanna have your strategy clear and work out what you're trying to achieve with that property. If it's long-term growth, use data and actual numbers to help guide your decision. Which brings me to my very last point. Something that's been coming up a lot lately is people saying with interest rates going up, costs are going up, what's the difference between rent and everything escalating? It's been reported that real estate agents are recommending rents be increased by 35% and even higher across Brisbane. In this example, if you were renting at the beginning of 2021 for $500 a week and your rent went up 35%, it would be $675 a week, meaning a $9,000 increase in your rent costs over that 12 month period. On the other hand, if you had a home loan, you took out in early 2021 and you're paying 2% as a variable rate. If it's since gone up to 5%, your weekly repayments have gone from $426 a week to $619. That's cost you another $10,000 extra on top of what it had previously. I know when I sold my place, I was thinking interest rates were gonna go up and up and up, and I never really took time to do an exercise like this where I look through the actual numbers, work out my actual budget and say, well, if I hold on to the property, I know it's gonna cost me an extra $10,000 compared to what it did, but I'm potentially gonna get more rent, et cetera, et cetera. If there's one takeaway from this video is turn off the media headlines, sit down and run your own race, work out the numbers in your situation, and see what's gonna make sense for you. At Hunter Galloway, we're mortgage brokers. We help home buyers across Australia. If you need help with finance, buying your first home, refinancing, get your interest rate down. We'd love to help out. Hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au. And until next time, see you later.